Well, if the government says it, it must be true. Wait, no, I got, I think I got that backwards. A very important saying to keep in mind, if the government says something, you should be extremely suspect. It's, I, I think that's putting it mildly. I, I hope that's not, not too offensive for any of our viewers who might still be suffering from Stockholm Syndrome, the love for your captors that so many of us feel as citizens of the American empire. Today, the warning comes from none other than Dr. Fauci himself. That's right. From Reuters, news.trust.org, Fauci warns against prematurely opening U.S. states in coronavirus pandemic. How the heck did we come to listen to this guy in the first place? Oh, yeah, Donald Trump wanted us to listen to him. Put him up in his press conferences. Made sure that this was a key voice representing the government of the United States of America in this coronaphobia pandemic. Leading U.S. infectious disease expert Anthony Fauci on Tuesday warned Congress that a premature opening of the nation's economy could lead to additional outbreaks of the deadly coronavirus. Even, even that, even that, oh, if you know what's going on here, should piss you off. Just as a matter of, of perspective, the, US, the, the leading U.S. infectious disease expert, director, National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. The misplaced attention here. Now, this is, this is what is costing us so much. This is what has led us into this forced unemployment crisis. The lack of perspective is how we allow ourselves to be manipulated. I've always said that a big part of what we do with Adam versus the man, with this show, with, with, with me bringing you an alternative narrative to the mainstream news, is just being able to step back when the mainstream media does such a good job of misdirecting your attention. Don't pay attention to this thing over here, this evil over here, this tragedy over here, this thing that government is doing to violate your rights to prop us up and our sponsors. Don't look at that. Look at this. L look at the squirrel stuck in the tree. They, they're rescued by the brave fire. Oh, it's a cat. Is it anything? Really There's a cat stuck. This is like Norman Rockwell America flashbacks here. There's a cat stuck in the tree. And, and look. It was, it was rescued by the brave fire. Now, I'm all for firefighters. Don't get me wrong. But, well, there's, there, look out. There's a, there's a water skiing squirrel. Better put that on the news. Heaven forbid we tell you anything important about what's going on. And, and when we do, oh, well, this is important. We, we interrupt our regularly scheduled programming. That's what it is designed to do, to program you. We interrupt this regularly scheduled programming of Cats being rescued from trees and water skiing squirrels to present today's latest offer from the fear mongers in government. They don't want you to be attention, paying attention to how bad they're screwing you over. They want you to be paying attention to the coronavirus. Or the misdirection should be obvious at this point. And, and even if we grant them, like they have, they, they came out with this overwhelming campaign of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and, and it worked. It was an, the, the American people were overwhelmed. We couldn't, still can't, in many ways, talk about anything else other than the coronavirus. And this is not a coronavirus pandemic crisis. The crisis that we are experiencing is a forced unemployment crisis. Now, fortunately, at least in the age of the internet, we will be able to see undoubtedly that the cure is worse than the disease. And this is just a part of the process that happens over time. For those of you like me who are watching the news closely with fear and trepidation and frustration and perhaps even a heavy serving of disappointment in the American people for falling for this, I would urge you to be patient. First of all, we have achieved 
a major victory in this battle against government around coronaphobia already. And that they have been forced to revise their numbers down to something at least a little bit more realistic, which puts this, as we've said from the beginning, in the range of the flu. A funky off-season flu, probably less deadly than a number of seasonal flus. And just that, just being able to put that much in perspective has been very helpful. But then there's still the bigger perspective of, hey, look at all these other things people are dying from. I hear people freaking out. There are going to be a thousand deaths a day in the United States forever. Well, do any of those people know or care to tell you, along with their fear-mongering rantings, how many people die every day in the United States? 7,500? No, they are not keen to point that out. The final victory comes not from this realization from this step in the process or even the next step the next phase in our recovery from coronaphobia will be the decisive answering of the question is the cure worse than the disease i guarantee you it is already soon we will have the statistics to back this up some experts Bob Michelle of J.P. Morgan, for one, on NBC has predicted that the unemployment recovery itself will take 10 to 12 years. I'm a little more optimistic in terms of the human potential to adapt, improvise, and overcome, as the Marines would say. The bigger victory comes in the, in the, in the, in the wake of all of this, when things have settle down when those of us who were skeptical the whole time get to serve up a giant serving of i told you so <laughs> oh one of those why is it always i hate to say it because you didn't listen because the american people failed to listen to proven voices of reason. And instead, we are listening to Dr. Anthony Fauci, who last week was blocked by the White House from testifying to a Democrat-controlled House of Representatives panel. The White House saying that it would be counterproductive, scrutiny, transparency, yes, that would be counterproductive, heaven forbid. As the Republican chairman of the Senate committee, Lamar Alexander, said, all roads back to work and back to school run through testing, and that what our country has done so far in testing is impressive, but near, not nearly enough. Our country? <laughs> you mean, despite your efforts in government and the FDA stopping this? Remember, I got a home test kit. You can go watch the video of me taking the corona test live. And we thought, because of what the FDA said, that the sober stick, the company that was distributing those, was going to have FDA approval within 48 hours. Nope. Yes, the testing is impressive in terms of what the government has done to suppress the ability of the market to provide test kits to everyone. Trump, who previously made the strength of the economy central to his pitch for his November re-election, has encouraged states to reopen businesses that had been deemed non-essential amid the pandemic. By the way, my favorite little skewering of non-essential, my friend Daniel Hayes with the Libertarian Party made his profile picture, the Jewish star of David, just with the word non-essential across it. And you go, ooh, one symbol, one word, so much power in just that statement. Senator Patty Murray, the senior Committee Democrat criticizing aspects of the administration's response to the pandemic said Americans need leadership. They need a plan. They need honesty, and they need it now before we reopen. <laughs> you can't have freedom without government supervision, supervision, without permission from the government. You couldn't possibly just decide for yourself what an appropriate level of risk is. Hold fast to the truth, my friends. 
It is coming in an avalanche that is going to eventually wipe out the current paradigm of statism. And all I can say is the sooner the better. I'm <laughs>